Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000. And before we're through, somebody may get a chance at $10,000. Did you know that? Yes, yes. George, proceed. Groucho Halo Meadows and Morris Kushner are standing by now. So folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bachelor life. Say the secret word and you win an extra $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. A Halo Meadows, uh, why did your parents ever pick out such an offbeat name like Halo? Oh, they didn't pick it. Uh, I had an ordinary name, so I chose it. Oh. <laughs> well, what was this ordinary name that you had? Myrtle Louise. <laughs> well, that's a nice name. <laughs> now, where are you from, Myrtle? Littlestown, Pennsylvania. A little town in Pennsylvania? Well, what's the name of it? Littlestown. Where is Little But it's Little, L-I-T-T-L-E-S. They're oh. very particular about the S. Well, I should think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Halo Meadow sounds like a pen name. Have you ever been in the pen, Halo? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, is when you chose Halo Meadows for a name, did you have a professional career in mind? Yes, I was writing. You were writing? Oh. Writing what plays. were you writing? Uh, plays? Well, but not so much. I'm more interested in songs. Writing songs. You're writing, uh, you're a composer now. Yes. And what are some of your songs? Maybe, uh, maybe I've heard them. Well, I had Victorian Walls. I was just Never around the corner. Them. You were where? I was just around the corner. Oh. <laughs> well, could you sing just around the corner? Well, no, but I, what I'm most interested in is uh, a series that I call a gloom series oh. and a super love. But I'll do one from the gloom. Hmm. Could you sing after you're gone? Chop my head off. <laughs> Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, 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 sing, all right, sing a little of it. I'd rather you sing around the corner. Huh? Uh, <laughs> chop my head off. Kick it around. Hang it up. Lay it down. Look at it, dear. Really take a good look. It's me. It's me. It's me. Oh, chop my head off. Make a nice, clean chop. Chop my head off, dear. Chop it off. Nice, I like that. <laughs> well, what kind of uh, music do you use for that? Do you have uh, somebody play on a guillotine? <laughs> That's a very unusual song. <laughs> your name is, let's see, uh, Halo Meadows? Is your name? No, I'm Morris Kushner. You're Morris Kushner. Have you always been Morris Kushner? I don't know. At the last five minutes, I couldn't oh. tell you. <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Kushner? Well, I was born in Nebraska and then moved to Chicago. And when I got out of the army, we settled down here in Southern California. Oh. Chop my head off. <laughs> Say, that's catchy, you know that? <laughs> I'm going to get a butcher's knife as soon as I get home and practice it. <laughs> what kind of work do you do, Mr. Kushner? I'm in the food business. In the fruit business? Food. Oh. You're in the food business now, eh? That's right. Well, that's pretty obvious, eh? <laughs> I would say you've gotten into the food business uh, fairly regularly, too. <laughs> what company uh, you, do you eat with, Mr. Morris? <laughs> Mr. Kushner? I'm uh, Vice President General Manager of Reese of California. We're an affiliate of Reese Finer Foods of Chicago, and we carry imported and domestic food specialties. Have you always been in the food business? Well, no, when I... Uh, came out of the Army about 10 years ago. I was a radio gag writer. Really? I've never seen one of those. <laughs> you don't look like a gag writer. You look perfectly normal to me, and you look well fed. What, what shows did you write gags for? Well, I was with The Life of Riley, mm -hmm. Duffy's Tavern, Red Skelton. But why Jimmy did you Durante. quit this soft racket to go into the food business? Well, I didn't care for the uncertainty of it. Uh, it was unsafe? Oh, yes. Working for seven weeks and then for 14 weeks looking for options. Uh, I remember one Maybe time... Maybe they didn't like your jokes, huh? Possibly. No talent. Possibly. Well, I wouldn't say that. Well, you, you intimated that. 
I did, but I didn't think you were aware of it. Oh. <laughs> I remember one comedian coming back to the uh, writing show business, the uncertainty of it, who uh, lost up a show, and then uh, at the completion of the show, went up to the client's booth where the 12 writers were and fired 12 us. 12 writers? Yes, did? and fired us en masse. Uh -huh. This was early Sunday morning, you mean, huh? <laughs> well, you're a delicious, rare, and exotic couple. <laughs> and I'd like to continue this conversation, but the time has come to play you about your life. You selected a dictionary quiz, and I'm going to ask you some questions. Well, now remember, if you miss two in a row, you're out on this show. And if you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. If a hippodrome is an arena, what is a palindrome? P-A-L-I-N-D-R-O-M-E. Can you spell that again, please? I doubt it, but I'll try. <laughs> P-A-L-I-N-Drome, D-R-O-M-E. It's not easy. Would it be uh, no. an air palace? Uh, an air, uh, something to do with an aerodrome? No, it's a word or a sentence that is spelled the same forwards or backwards. Not an easy question. No. You have one wrong, don't get another one wrong, you'll be out of the game. Don't shout at them, George. I want to impress them. If a statue is a sculptor, what is a stat... stat... statute? S-T-A-T-U-T-E. -E. It's a law. That's right, it's a law. You're back on the right track. Three more right and you'll have your thousand dollars. If a Toreador is a bullfighter, what is a humidor? Uh, it's a... yes. Well, let him in. You spit in. It's one of those things... <laughs> between you, so I'm going to overlook that. He had the right answer. It was humidor. It's a tobacco That's right. container. That's right. A jar to keep tobacco in, and you keep your trap shut unless you want to. <laughs> Two more right, you'll have it. Yeah. Pauperizing Mr. Kushner over here. If a bugle, a bugle is a horn, <laughs> what is a... If a, ho if a bugle is a horn, what is a beagle? It's a dog. It's a dog, except in German, it's an iron for a pamp, uh, pressing pants. Except on Sunday morning, you eat it with locks. That's true, unless the door is open. I'm pretty sure if you get one more right, you'll have a thousand dollars. If a tango is a dance, or a dance, what is a mango? It's a fruit. It's a fruity you is absolutely right. You got yeah. four in a row, so you win a thousand dollars. Well. <laughs> now you won a thousand dollars. You can keep it and quit, or you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at ten thousand dollars. You bet your life. Now go over and sit down and think about it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Bracho, Mrs. Marjorie Yeager is waiting to talk to you. Her partner is a special guest who was sent to us by one of our listeners in Colorado, and the only name he uses is Lingo. So, folks, you can please and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Marjorie Yeager and, uh, and Lingo. Uh, Lingo what? What's the rest of your name? Bingo? No, just, just use one. Lingo, bingo? No, just Lingo, bingo. Oh. A lot of great men have only had one name, you know. Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, Liberace, Groucho. <laughs> Let's get acquainted with Mrs. Yeager here. Marjorie, I take it you're expecting, is that uh, correct? Yes, I am. Well, I wish you every happiness. When is the big event due? Oh, well, about three months. Oh, three months? Uh, what a relief. I thought I was going to have to hurry to finish this conversation. <laughs> Where are you from, Marge? Well, I was born in Fort Collins, Colorado. Well, this will be a great thrill for you. Is this your first child you're expecting? No, it's my tenth. Yes. You, you have nine children? Yes, I have. Well, what are the youngsters' names, Marjorie? Can, can you remember? Well, my name? baby's name is Jimmy, and I have twins, Judy and Jean, and Kenny, and... Uh, Kathleen and Mary 
Mary Jo and Tommy and Gary and the oldest is Dusty. The oldest is Dusty? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's easily understood with nine kids, huh? You probably don't get around to dusting him off more than once a, <laughs> more than once or twice a month. <laughs> getting old enough now he takes care he of dust himself, himself. Huh? yes he does. what kind of work does your husband do to support this ravenous mob well he uh owns a california oxygen service company he sells oxygen oxygen yeah he's probably hitting the tank right now <laughs> <laughs> now let's see you say your name is lingo yeah and uh, that's the only name you have yes sir <laughs> where are you from uh, lingo Oh, I'll call you Ling, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, Colorado, basically. Colorado? Yeah. Oh. Very Take interesting outfit you're wearing there, Lingo. Could you tell us something about it? Yeah, this is just a day-to-day -day outfit that I wear up on top of the mountain where I live. Uh, it's elk skin. Shot the elk myself. And, and so what were you wearing before you shot the elk? <laughs> That's a good question. I wish I had an answer. Where do you live, Lingo? Do you live in a tree or...? No, I've got a cabin up on top of Lookout Mountain. It's at the end of Lariat Loop Trail. And Lookout Mountain is in between uh, Tabletop Mountain and the Continental Divide over on the other side of the... Did you uh, build this cabin yourself? No, no, I, I, I wouldn't own the property because well, when I want to get up and go, I want to go. I don't want to have to worry about leaving anything behind. That's Do you so... live there all alone? Uh? Oh, yeah, sure. What about companionship if you live up there all by yourself? Oh. Are you a hermit? No, no, got lots of friends. I mean, besides a two-legged kind, why, there's lots of animals, the deer... You mean like the one you just shot? That's a friend of yours? <laughs> you imagine if he hated that elk? <laughs> well, you know, in nature, some of the things are going to have to give up to some of the other things. And this is just one of the laws of nature. I mean, I, I don't kill animals unless I absolutely need to. I mean, I needed, I needed clothes three years ago, and this is the easiest way of getting it. Um, what about Jim Clinton? Have you tried that? <laughs> you can go over there and shoot him and get one of his suits. <laughs> I suppose you know what Jim Clinton is. <laughs> well, he's a very uh, prominent... Uh, he sells a lot of clothes here, retail clothes in town. Okay. Well, how does a big city like L.A. compare with your place on the mountaintop? Oh, well, let me put it this way. Have you ever sat on the side of a, of a mountain, say, in the late October afternoon when the sun is still warm and maybe there's a couple of fleece clouds up in the sky and, and just sit there and listen to the grass grow? I did that once and got run over by a caterpillar tractor. <laughs> the driver thought I was an air of corn still standing there. <laughs> Go on, Lingo. I, I like to hear you talk this way. What other sounds do you hear up there on the mountaintop? There's lots of good sounds. Sounds of the winds coming in off the Continental Divide. That's a good one, too, especially in the wintertime. Well, do you recommend your way of life for, for all of us? Yes, I, 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 think, I think you ought to make a try at it. Um, because, well, just look at nature. I mean, how many animals do you see in nature that push themselves as hard as the man animal pushes himself. Every other animal will slow down long before man's point. He'll take it easy. He'll rest. He'll have fun. That's true. I'm with you all the way. All right. What you say is very true about animals. I'll see you up there in a couple of weeks. <laughs> they, they can afford to live that way, but an animal doesn't have to scramble around for the dough for the payments on the refrigerator and the washing machine, the furniture, to say, to say nothing of back alimony. <laughs> well, I can't understand why you don't like our way of life, Lingo. Look how quiet and calm the world is right now. You know it's so quiet you can hear a bomb drop. <laughs> Are you married, Lingo? No. Why not? Who'd marry me? Well, I think you're a very attractive looking chap. Uh, think you'll no. ever marry and settle down? No, I I'll I'm tell sure you. Hundreds of thousands of girls would, would marry you and be glad to mm -hmm. marry you. I, I feel that, uh, that I got to keep moving because, uh, well, every man's got to answer some questions for himself. And uh, uh, life, is, life is like a farm. I mean, you can't just keep taking out. You got to put back in. Mm -hmm. 
Well, isn't that what we're all doing now? We all give back more than we take. Unless, of course, you're cheating on your income tax. <laughs> well, just what do you give back? Obviously, you don't take very much. So what is your contribution, Lingo? I give back This is rather a personal question. Yeah, well, I give back folk songs. Folk songs? Yeah. Oh, you're a singer? You know the song about uh, getting your head chopped off? Huh? <laughs> Could you give us a folk song now? Uh, yeah, when I came in, I, I checked my guitar with the doorman here. Do you me. always carry a guitar with you? Oh, yeah. Sure. You say you have it out here? Yeah. Let's George! Get, get him man could you bring out Mr. Lingo's uh, guitar? Ah. Thank you. Finally found something that Fenneman was good for. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Uh, do you know many folk songs? What do you want? You need a yeah, chair? Yeah, listen, I... Yeah, you oh, got, uh, you got a, something to put my foot on or something? Or, what's that? Hey, why don't you put that over there? Yeah, is that where you want it? Yeah, that'd be fine. Thank you, kindly. Now, if you put the other one up, I'll shine them for you. <laughs> you better not. It's the dirt that's holding these boots together. <laughs> Never been shined. Yeah, let's see. Uh, you want to have a folk song? Well, I'll tell you, you know, folk songs are as wide as human emotion. Everything from, well, from nonsense to protest. Everything from might say a baby crying to a, a man dying. And Don't mention baby crying around her, will you? Well, there's folk songs for children, too. And there's, there's folk songs when you got the wide smile across your face and... What are you doing here? <laughs> Go away, Senator. See you next week. You said the sacred word, Senator Keefover, so you get $50, and you get $50. Well, thank you. That's uh, $5 for each of your kids. Your husband gets nothing. <laughs> it's just about what he's entitled to. <laughs> you said the sacred word. What was it? Smile. Smile. You said smile. Oh. A wide smile or something. Well, give us a song in about 30 seconds, huh? What kind of a song are you going to sing? Well, <laughs> sing a happy song. All right, sing a happy song. A happy song when... Let's see what. Oh. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, whiskey, I cry. If I don't get some whiskey, well, I think I will die. This is one of the songs they used to sing when... Oh, right after the Civil War and all the Southerners were coming out into the West along with a lot of other people and they're making a new territory and they had to have something to dissolve away their troubles and the aches and their shoulder blades and the hurts the and the baggage. Well, it's a beefsteak when I'm a hungry, rye whiskey when I'm a dry, the greenbacks when I'm a hard up and religion when I die. Come on, can you harmonize? Can I harmonize? Oh. I'm just waiting for somebody to ask me. Jack the diamond, Jack the diamond, you know you will You grab my poor pockets of silver and gold. If the ocean was whiskey and I was a duck, I'd pay like the bottom and never come up. If bow, bow, beetle, bottle, bottle, beetle, bow, bow, bow. Lingo, we need more people like you in the city. You want to sing another song? Sure. Right. Sing another. Well, now there's the songs of when a man don't feel so good, when he's got troubles in between his shoulder blades and in his head. And he's got to get it out some way, so he gets it off of his chest by singing about it. Oh, it takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long. I crawled into the boxcar and lay me down to sleep. Good Lord, I crawled into the boxcar and lay me down to sleep. I crawled into the boxcar and lay me down to sleep when I awoke. There 
was shackles on my feet Oh, it takes a worried man to sing a worried song It takes a worried man to sing a worried song it Takes a worried man to sing a worried song I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long put an end to this. I hate to do it because you sing wonderfully well. Uh, I'd, sh I'd like to see you win some money here tonight so you could get off that mountain and get down in the valley. <laughs> so let's play You Bet Your Life. Now you selected science and medicine. Now remember on all these answers you talk it over before you answer. One answer between you. If you miss two in a row you're out. If you get four in a row right you win a thousand dollars. Here we go. There are two types of current and electricity. One is direct. What is the other? Alternating. Alternating is right. We have one right, three more, and you'll have $1,000. In chemistry, what does the symbol S stand for? Sulfur. Sulfur is right. You're halfway to your $1,000 now. Where in the body do you find the thyroid? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Neck, throat, all right. You have one more right, and you'll have $1,000. Edward Jenner is credited with what great contribution to medicine? J-E-N-N-E-R. He's a researcher of some kind. Um, what did he research? He discovered, um, he discovered a, an antitoxin well, that's close enough. He introduced vaccination, but I would say that he had this right. Yeah. Well, we got four in a row, so we have one thousand dollars. Well, you want a thousand dollars. Now you can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at ten thousand dollars. You bet your life. Now go over and sit down and think about it. Huh? So long.